Hi, I'm Ian Proudfoot, KPMG's Global Head of Agribusiness and also our Agri-Food Leader here in New Zealand. It's a great pleasure today to be asked to talk to you um, as part of the market launch for this year's uh, market report, as well as, as you start to think about the strategy for the organics industry in New Zealand moving forward. Firstly, congratulations. The market report this year so shows some significant progress in the organic sector and some real highlights, particularly the growth of organic dairy sales out of New Zealand and the success we're having in the Chinese market. But the report's not all good news. In fact, should I be offering congratulations? Or should I be saying better luck next time? Because you are part of a sector globally that has become more connected to food than it has ever been. You are part of a sector where people are looking for healthy products and solutions that give them certainty about how they have been grown and produced. So when I look at the numbers in this year's market report, my question is, have you done as well as you could have done or should have done in this environment? This environment is incredibly complex at the moment. COVID's changed so many of those fundamentals that we've taken for granted for years, if not decades. And from my perspective, when you look at it, I'm describing the world today as a VUCA squared world, not just volatile, complex, ambiguous and uncertain, but something that is significantly more confusing and more challenging to businesses, to governments and consumers than we've probably seen at any time in history. Just think about some of those areas. The rise of populism, the realities that some people are believing being different to scientific or factual reality. The movements being based on perceptions of truth rather than actual truths. And what does that mean for the future? How could we see another Trump? Well, we will see another Trump. We will see other leaders like him driving agendas around a whole range of different issues. And if you talk to our people globally, the one they're concerned about driving a populist movement is climate change, as the haves and have nots from climate transition start to become more apparent. The pandemic itself is part of that VUCA world, but what it's done is refocus people on health and the awareness of health in society, but also the, the fundamental challenges our health systems face when they are faced with these sort of major drives of ill people. That will undoubtedly drive us towards a preventative healthcare system, one where food moves from being something we eat for enjoyment to something we eat for functional benefits that ultimately will drive the outcomes we achieve as human beings. I think that's a great opportunity for organics. You can be part of that story, but you'll need to think about how you achieve that. The other thing maybe to touch on is inequity. We've seen these massive awareness grow of the inequality inherent in our society. We have organisations around the world talking about their purpose and trying to define clearly what that is. But at the same time in the food system, we have nearly 800 million people every single night around the world in going home hungry, going to bed hungry. And what does that mean? That means that inequity is inherent within our global food system. And I think as participants in that food system, you will become either part of the solution or you will be the problem. So how you respond to these inequity challenges is no longer a nice to have. You have to be very clear on what is being done. And at the core of all this, the core of who will decide your future is the consumer. And we now think about the supply chain not as a lineal chain, but as a web where the consumer sits at the centre, understanding what everybody is bringing to the table. So whether you're the, the seed producer or the gene genetics producer, whether you're a processor, the retailer, the government as the regulator, or the community as the provider of the social licence, everybody's role is important in giving the consumer confidence around what they need. 
and therefore everybody needs to be meeting the needs of those consumers. And I do ask the question reading the market report whether you as an industry here in New Zealand are meeting the needs of those consumers. Do you really understand why they buy organics? Is it about the soil? Is it about the sprays? Is it about the fact it just feels good? But you've got to be clear on what are those drivers. And what may drive people to buy your products may be very different to why you grow those products. And understanding that and meeting the consumer need rather than your own need becomes more important. As a consequence, when I look at the future of the industry, obviously the Organic Products Bill stands there as a major milestone. But I encourage you to ensure that when you're thinking about that bill, be comfortable it is meeting the needs of our consumers and not the needs of you as growers only. And that means fundamentally we may be looking at an organic system evolving around the world but it's not one size fits all but it's many sizes fitting many and that means that you will, may have a different place to play in the game moving forward and that's going to be accelerated by conventional agriculture starting to think very clearly about what its regenerative future looks like what that means is the daylight between organic and conventional is going to shrink. The buffer that organics had around it, the three year conversion period, will start to mean less to consumers as they start to understand what regenerative is all about and as more participants start to clearly align their production system towards regenerative. Ultimately a shift towards regenerative is beneficial. It's beneficial to our environment it's beneficial to our consumers. It will give them greater trust about the products they're eating and it will meet the differentiated needs that many different consumers have. But it does raise a real question as you think about your strategy of where you play moving forward. What is the future for organic farming in a regenerative world? In a world where everybody's starting to think about how they can sequester carbon to be part of the transition to a lower carbon future? In a world where emerging proteins are becoming part of what everybody's asking for rather than being niche market opportunities. Just to put that some in context, I set my 14 year old daughter up on shares just at Christmas and put some money into her account. The first share she bought was in Beyond Meat. It's not because it's a fad or it's a fashion, it's because it's what she believes. And that is something that we need to recognize. The world is changing. So how do you maintain relevance? Well, the answer to that question to me is simple. You really need to understand your consumers. They are your future. And you will only thrive if you are meeting those needs. As you think forward, as you start your strategy process, I encourage you to see the world as it is today. Not as you think it should be, or not as it was 6, 12 or even 2 years ago. We're living in a very different world. And one of the big opportunities that organisations have is being able to see the opportunity inherent in this new world. However, many organisations I'm talking to at the moment are being confined by what you could call their educated incapacity, their belief that they already know the markets they're playing in and their unwillingness to seek diverse views and perspectives to understand what the future really looks like. But when we are talking about a VUCA squared world, we're talking about a world that is different in every significant respect. So please do seek diverse views as you start on your strategy journey. Do not be constrained by conventional wisdom. Challenge yourselves to think about the world as your consumers are seeing it. The good news is you've got the opportunity to act now so that when we come to the next market report in two or three years time, think about what the story you want to be reading looks like. One not just about growth, but one about impactful growth. One about helping people to have better, healthier lives a stronger environment, a better economy and one that talks to 
an industry you want to be part of in the future, but more importantly, one your consumers want to buy from as well. So as you start your deliberations, good luck, have fun, and I can't wait to see what comes out of this process. Thank you for inviting me to join you today.